Welcome to the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, your guide to motorsport sponsorship. Here's your host, Josh Weesey. Welcome to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Amsoil. Today we have a show that features your favorite motorsports marketing and sponsorship podcaster. Yep, that's that's me. I think that I'm the only one that does a motorsports marketing and sponsorship show, but I guess that just further validates that I'm your favorite. But either way, you're here, and I have a topic that I want to cover with you today, and I kind of hinted at this during my last live show, and it is a show about gear. It's the gear to elevate your game. So we're going to uh, – that's kind of a goofy uh, – <laughs> It's kind of a goofy title there, but either way, the gear to elevate your game, it's the stuff that you need to help you with a better content creation program. So I made a list of a few things. We're going to go through those items here in a little bit. Um, I actually came up with nine different things to really focus on. Um, So we'll hit all those, uh, but first I got to tell you a little bit about Amsoil. So Amsoil and I have partnered up to make sure that you're getting All of the information you need to make good decisions about your sponsorship program. And at the same time, you know, they are a big supporter of motorsports, whether it's the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series, whether it's just providing amazing racing oils for snowmobiles, for, you know, drag cars, for UCVs, for trucks. It doesn't matter. They have an option for you. So, Check out amsoil.com slash rider for details. Or you can always reach out to me. Um, my dad is an Amsoil dealer as well. So, you know, let me know if you need to get a hold of some of the stuff. We have plenty of options available. And I would love to get your feedback. So head over to iTunes. Leave that rating and review. If you want the show to be able to continue and you haven't left a rating or review yet, you got to go do it because it's really important. Uh, for the visibility of the show and the future success of the show. So please head over to iTunes, leave that rating and review, and then subscribe regardless of whatever podcast player you use. Now I want to shout out our partners right now. This episode here is brought to you by Solderweld. They produce game-changing metal bonding technology. Topthepodium.com, they're experts in motorsport sponsorship. Bold Racing, they're a family race team and GSP XTV Axle Specialist. Crash Act Industries, they provide human protection and extreme racing products. And I also want to shout out some of our other partners, MBRP, HMK, Studboy Traction, GSP XTV, and High Octane Coffee. Without further ado, let's hop in. Okay, like I said before, this show is about the gear that can elevate your content creation game. So the intent is that you listen to these different gear items that we're going to talk about and kind of look at your own stuff and say what do I already have maybe what do I need if you've already been doing some high-end content creation odds are you've got a lot of this stuff captured but maybe there's something different on here Uh, if you're just getting started out though let's say you're just hitting races right now and you're thinking like okay great I've got some content right but like I don't really know what else I'm going to do. I've got 1,500 photos of me ripping my dirt bike around the track. You know, like, is there anything else I can do? The answer is yes, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what that might be. So getting into this, I'm going to kick it right off with point number one, which is the most obvious but probably the most crucial, and I'm hoping that everybody already has this piece covered, but maybe not to the level that you could, and that is a top-notch smartphone. The capabilities of smartphones nowadays are just ridiculous, but you can still get ones that are not excellent at content creation. You know, the iPhone X, you know, the brand new Samsung Galaxy, the S9s, uh, I'm not sure if there's a 10 out now, but like those models are phenomenal for content creation. You can do such good photography and videography with those phones it's a gr- like it's a critical item now i know this is pretty obvious i'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it but it's very critical to think about it if you're buying your next cell phone get a good one 
Um, I definitely spent a little bit extra when the Samsung Galaxy S9 first came out because I wanted a phone that was capable of doing the live videos so I could start my own you know, live show. Prior to that, I had I had this iPhone that was like an SE or something. I don't even know what it is, but it's pretty crappy. And uh, it was not capable of doing what I wanted to do. So it is pretty important to, to pick a good phone. Um, I think it's good to focus on your front and rear camera. Um, if you can get a really good quality, you know, lens, um, that's, I think that's the way to go. I mean, just think of how many opportunities you have to do little selfie pictures or whatever the shots are you hand it to your you know your mom or your friend or your dad or whoever and they can take pictures of you kind of like on the track or getting ready whatever it is so i think it's pretty critical to not overlook that but the next thing i really want to add on to that is you can really accessorize the phones to do a lot more things so i'm kind of cheating here i guess by making number one being just a night like just a phone but and then expanding it and all these other things but you can do so much now with phones um where you can get gimbal mounts to help your image stabilization you can get tons of lighting attachments there's photo editing apps that you can download maybe it's five bucks um for a really good one and you can get exterior microphones so you can actually plug in a lot of these things and have a really good content creation platform so picture this uh, a gimbal mount which is great image symbolization a little lighting attachment um, an exterior microphone like you can capture some good stuff pair all that stuff with an iPhone X you're on fire um, there are little um, handheld devices that all these things plug into so there's definitely a lot you can do with that so I'm picturing you being at the track or maybe it's out in the back country and you're just thinking gosh I don't have time for like um, you know a full-on video crew right now or I don't have money for a whole full-on video crew whatever it is but I can capture this moment and I've got someone that can help me with that here take my phone sn snatch a couple photos you're good to go um, and like I said this is pretty obvious but I'm hoping that if you're thinking about some of these little accessories and what else you can do with your existing smartphone that it's going to open up your eyes to some other opportunities there. So really, I want you to consider, number one, a top-notch and accessorized smartphone. Item number two, an action camera. Again, not a mind-blowing item here, but having a good action camera is going to be able to take your photography, your videography to the next level. Even some of the older equipment, I think it's still pretty solid. So, you know, I think with smartphones, you got to be on top of it. But some of the older action cameras, you know, two, three, four years old, still give you some really good stuff. I actually have been using a Sony action cam for a number of years now, and I've done a lot of fun little films with it. Um, I just made the decision a couple of days ago to upgrade to a GoPro Hero 7 Black, which is the newest GoPro camera and it has a lot of cool options like live streaming uh, which I thought was pretty neat and it has the opportunity to post straight to Instagram or I think Facebook as well but pretty cool um, lots of you know slow-mo options hands-free activation of you know pictures and stuff like that it gives you an option for a portrait mode so lots of really good stuff and I'm picturing if you're out in the backcountry um, or even if you're at a racetrack or maybe you're in, the, in uh, the seat of a monster truck, you can clip these things anywhere. The accessories are just amazing, but you can mount them pretty much anywhere and get some pretty amazing shots. Um, you know, I've been seeing from a vlogging standpoint people using these newer action cameras for pretty much the whole experience. Um, so they're good enough now where you can capture everything with it, but, I mean, it, you could pair action camera footage with, the footage from that cell phone that I just told you about, fully accessorized. Um, and you can get some really, really amazing content. Um, if you're into extreme sports, I really think this is a must-have, which pretty much most of the people who listen to the show are into that. Um, you know, even now there's options for 360-degree footage, which, you know, I've never tried before, but it's really interesting, and I think it's – something that not a lot of people are doing yet so you could be you know one of the earlier adopters of that 
um, type of technology. Um, and it's just it's cool shots that you can get with that that you can't get with a smartphone. Um, now, the challenge with this is if we talk about the uh, fully loaded smartphone and we talk about a fully loaded action camera, <laughs> you're spending some cash. You know, smartphones, they've pretty much all are on some sort of monthly payment plan that kind of makes it a little bit more attainable and you're going to use it for everything else. But an action camera to get one of the good ones that are out right now, I mean, it's setting you back 500 bucks with the camera and then, you know, a bunch of little accessories and knickknacks and spare batteries and bags and all that stuff. So I still think it's pretty critical though. You might be able to work something like that into a sponsorship deal. If you're promising some sort of content to a sponsor, you might be able to propose, hey, I'm going to set aside X number of dollars in my proposal for, you know, updated gear so I can get you really good footage. So that might be an option as well when, when cost becomes a concern because let's just face it, cost is always a concern in, in any of these sports. Even the guys who are running these, you know, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 vehicles, like cost is still a concern. It's just they're, they're playing at a little bit higher level there. But, um, Either way, these things are very important, and I think an action camera is really one of those things that, for an action sports, it's a must-have, and it's also very, very realistic to get your hands on one and operate it and make good stuff. Okay, before I get into points three through nine, I want to take a minute to thank the sponsors for this podcast. Two questions I get continuously about this show and about sponsorship is do I need my own website and do I need a resume the answer is in my opinion yes to both and that's why we partner with top the podium.com now if you want to see an example of what a professional website and what a professional resume looks like you gotta check out top the podium.com they did my website the sponsored writer club podcast website is sponsoredwriterclubpodcast.com. That was created by Jeff Vanistall of toptopodium.com. I think it's awesome. I get a lot of good feedback about it. And there's a number of other websites out there that Jeff has produced that are just phenomenal. So I think it's important in this world of social media where you have control of your content that's what a website does. It gives you full control. We don't know what Facebook's going to do sometimes. We don't know what Instagram's going to do. We don't know what Twitter's going to do. So if we don't have that central location to direct people and house our content, there is some risk that we incur. So I strongly recommend getting a website, talking to toptopodium.com. And then the resume, again, is massive. And if you want to stand out, get it done professionally. And honestly, it is one of the best ways to step up your game and present yourself in the best way possible. Hey guys, George Hamill here to talk about Solder Weld's new off-road repair kit. If you're a racer of any type or an off-road enthusiast like myself, you're going to want to take a close look at this product that bonds metal on the spot. Solder Weld has combined some of their most elite products into one small kit that fits perfectly under your seat or strapped to a roll cage and allows you to make some insane fixes anywhere you go. How many of us have been in a race or out on the trail and got a rock chip and a radiator or brake line? We have seen a top tier desert race team at the 2019 Min 400 taken out by a simple rock to the radiator. If they had an off-road repair kit on board, they could have been back up and running in just minutes. The kit includes everything you need to work on dirty aluminum, stainless steel, copper, and many other metals. Solder Weld's cutting edge technology allows you to make these fixes with extremely low heat and incredibly high tensile strength, leaving you a lasting fix every time. Don't be that guy broke down on the side of the trail. Get your off-road repair kit today and your friends will thank you. Family race team. Those are the first words that come to mind when I think of bold racing. And the next one is actually axles. Bold Racing is a premier distributor of GSP XDV axles. And if that wasn't cool enough, they just came out with an entirely new axle called the Revolution Axle. It is a hollow tube axle. It's really cool. If you head over to their website, gspxtv.com, or you can find out more at boldracingltd.com, you can find out how this new axle technology works. So they are saying to view this as a fuse for your drivetrain. So the hollow tube CV 
axle twist technology actually increases the strength and reliability of the axle and it also reduces stress on the drivetrain. Plus, honestly, it's super cool looking. And if people know me, they know that I really like cool looking stuff. So they come in this really cool gold color. Check it out. It's absolutely revolutionary. Safety is our overriding priority. I hear it all the time, but I have to ask myself, is it though? Is that the first thing we think of? Is that the first thing you think of? Over the past couple of years, we've seen the performance of production UTVs increase, I don't know, somewhere around 350%. That means these machines give us a lot more opportunity to have fun and win races, but it also unfortunately gives us new opportunities to crash. And that's why we have partnered with Crash Addict Industries. The owner, Travis Pointer, became very accustomed to crashing early in his career. He saw it as inevitable, and he set out to make the process safer. With a passion for racing, welding, and engineering, Crash Attic Industries now produces full cage and other protection systems intentionally designed to protect you during an accident on the track. They also offer a line of human protection products through their vendors. Do this for me at this point. If you're racing with a stock cage right now, please go check out Crash Addict dot com and see at least just see what they have to offer even if you choose to go with a different company please 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 make safety your overriding priority okay next up point three a decent laptop now the reason why i say that a decent laptop and i specify laptop versus desktop is it gives you the opportunity to do some editing while you're traveling now, even if it's not you, like I said before, if you got your mom or one of your friends or maybe it's a cousin, I don't know, somebody else that's helping you out, like you can give them uh, your laptop and say, hey, can you just upload these photos real quick or can you do a little bit of editing? You know, some of the smartphones have a pretty good editing app on them, but if you want to get next level content, um, I think a decent laptop is a way to go. Um, if you start getting into stuff like podcasts or, you know, bigger YouTube files, uh, this becomes pretty doggone critical. Now, a lot of people have laptops already, um, or some sort of desktop. I mean, I think laptops are pretty doggone popular nowadays, but if not, I think that this is something that you're going to want to invest in. Uh, I also think that it becomes even more critical when you get deeper and deeper into the business side of you know managing your budgets and if it's taxes you know maybe you're prepping a profit and loss statement or an income statement um, if you've you know turned your uh, writing career into a business you're gonna get into that stuff you're gonna want a laptop anyways so again a decent laptop you're, you're talking a little bit of cash now I mean um, I use a Microsoft Surface Book, which is a couple years old, three years old now maybe. Um, I paid $1,500 for that brand new, but I needed a quiet running portable laptop uh, to do my podcast with. Um, so for example, I mean my microphone sits only a couple of, mm, maybe a foot and a half away from my laptop. And <laughs> most laptops that I know of, like the fan no noise is so loud, that's all you'd hear on the on the show. So. I don't have that issue, but uh, if you're getting into that type of content creation, I think you're going to need to invest in that laptop and probably a good, solid, rugged traveling case. Okay, point number four. Now, this almost sounds like I'm telling you how to start a podcast here, which is fine. Let me know if you ever want to do that. I can help you with that too. But a microphone. Now, there are little... Uh, attachments that you can get for your smartphone which I talked about earlier and you can get really nice attachments for your smartphone as well you can do the same for the action camera you can do the same for the laptop you can get microphones that really elevate you know your sound quality so if you're in a side-by-side -side, ripping down a track with a GoPro um, you can put a different microphone on there now it does take some setting up to get there it's not I think Sony action cam might have a better option if you're just wanting to plug in an external microphone, but um, there's all these little things that you can do to get really good sound. Um, there's a lapel microphone, so if you're recording like you know in the pits and you want to do a little interview or like a documentary style, you can wear a lapel microphone and run that into your smartphone or into your GoPro or 
you know, straight into your laptop with a webcam. I don't know, however you want to do it. But the point is here, you can get a lot better audio quality that way versus just using your cell phone. So again, lapel microphone is basically one that will clip to your shirt. You can run it like underneath your shirt and it, it's real close to you. It picks up really good sound. Um, the next one is, uh, there's one that I actually use. It's called a Rode. Mm, I'm messing it up now and I thought I had it here to look at, but I think it's called Rode Audio Mic. And it's just this little thing that I can plug into the audio jack in my cell phone and it boosts my, I don't know, I guess it improves my voice a little bit. I use it on my live shows uh, just to kind of help out some with the the sound quality, but they have really good ones that you can plug in as well. Um, I mean, obviously for the podcast here, I have uh, uh, a pseudo professional, nah, this isn't really professional. But I've got a uh, a decent microphone that I've been using for the, the past two and a half years. And you can get really invested into this stuff. Um, you know, I've got a set of noise-canceling um, headphones with, with built-in microphones that are great for doing interviews, um, you know, in a crowd of people or in a busy, a busy place. Or like at Vegas Arena, I use them and there's just vehicles riding by. You know that's a five hundred dollar investment just for that microphone setup. Just for the like, that's it. That's just for the microphone setup. So the one that I usually uh, record with is only about a hundred and fifty dollar investment. I say only like like this stuff doesn't stress me out constantly. But uh, either way, I think a good solid microphone can make a big difference in your sound quality. So if you're trying to up your content creation game. You know, that is one of the pieces of equipment to make it happen. Now, I've covered a lot of the basics here, um, whether you're backcountry riding or, you know, racing somewhere, or even if you're just an off-roader or just a content creator. Like, I think those are a lot of the basics, and you can get a lot done with that. But some people just need to take it to the next level, and that's what point five is all about. That is the professional equipment. I'm not going to even be able to tell you too much about this stuff because, frankly, I haven't invested in the real high-end stuff yet. I would say my, my podcast um, noise-canceling headphones are probably the, the most high-end stuff that I have right now. But you can get into really high-end photography, really high-end videography. Um, it's very complex. I think that... If you are going to start investing, you know, higher levels of money into cameras, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, <laughs> you know, it just keeps going up. If you're getting into that, definitely don't take my word for it. Start doing some of your research. Um, you know, there's a lot of information out there about this type of equipment. Um, I know B and H Photo and Video. I think that's a pretty popular website. I bought a couple of cameras and stuff from there. They have really extensive selections. Um, but yeah, I, I would say if you want to just kind of browse around and start looking on there, and then maybe start hitting up reviews, uh, YouTube, Google. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who've done side by side comparisons, and they can tell you how to use these things. But if you really want to get next level. Um, it's time to start investing in that professional equipment. Um, again, I'm not going to give you much detail here because I, I, I frankly just haven't done it myself. And because I maybe I'm afraid or I, I don't know. It's just like I got my hands tied with all the other stuff. But if you're trying to get really high-end stuff, maybe you've got a big sponsorship deal and you you're expected to deliver some you know, amazing content. This is where you got to get in it at. Um, you know, there's a, a point here where you have to make a decision if you want to invest in this or if you just want to hire somebody to do that because of the complexity. So there are definitely a lot of people who are smarter than me and that can figure this stuff out themselves. But honestly, if you're getting to this point, you might need to start thinking about that you know, the outsourcing, find somebody, find a crew, uh, find your buddy who's, uh, you know, an art student and has studied videography and photography for the past 10 years. Like that's fine, but it's a lot. That's, I'm not going to tell you don't do it yourself, but just understand there's a risk there. 
Okay, so point five there is the professional high-end equipment. All right, the next one, number six, branded apparel and accessories. So I'm thinking of this gear as your next level in branding. Now, a lot of people do this anyways, but if you're getting into the content creation, I really think it starts setting you apart if you take into consideration what you're wearing, the objects that are around you, and how you're capturing those. Um, you know, I've seen people take like their hero cards and um, capture them taking a signature um, at a at an event. So they're writing down their signature, and there's a a really great shot of them signing it, and you can see their hero card, which has all their sponsor information on there. Pretty cool way of like you know a cool little plug. Um, a lot of people get into branded shirts and hats. Um, you know, there's a number of people who have this going on for them, but sometimes the, the branded shirts and hats, like they just buy a couple of them off of some site and they look okay. Some people go all out and make some really good looking stuff. Um, either way, I recommend doing that. Um, unless of course you're, um, with a shirt sponsor or hat sponsor or something like that. And you're expected to wear that equipment or those accessories, that's great too. But um, I think that if you can incorporate some of those things in, it's phenomenal. You know, I've seen people do it uh, with like branded flags in the backgrounds of their videos, um, which is pretty cool. Um, these are all good opportunities to do with your um, your sponsors as well. So if you know, for example, I've got an MBRP flag in my studio here, um, which is just a corner in my basement. Let's be honest, but. Uh, I have an MBRP flag there, and every now and then I'll take little pictures where you can capture that in the background. Um, one, I like it. You know, the MBRP logo is a really cool logo, and I, the color scheme is actually the same color scheme as my podcast and my studio, so it blends in really nicely. Um, but you can do the same thing in whatever area you plan on uh, taking some pictures in. So uh, the next thing here is vehicle wraps. Now. People are pretty used to wrapping their snowmobile or wrapping their race bike or whatever it is, but you know sometimes your daily driver. What do you think about that wrapping that thing? Um, or I don't know. I mean, you've got your tow rig, whatever you're you're pulling your trailer to. Maybe you wrap that. Maybe it's not a full wrap. Maybe you put just some cool stickers on it. Um, you know, of course, tasteful. But you can work that into your content as well. So. Um, so point six here, branded apparel and accessories is really about creating the stuff in the background or the stuff that you're wearing. So taking that equipment and really up in your game with it. Okay, the next one, point seven, is battery accessories. So I just told you basically to go out and spend uh, your life savings on a bunch of equipment and pretty much all of it is battery operated um this is a big deal if you get out in the middle of nowhere so we're talking like these the desert racers we're talking about the backcountry snowmobilers the overlanders you get out in the middle of nowhere and you're like how the heck am i going to charge my laptop how am i going to charge you know my phone my now josh maybe buy a gopro like how am i going to charge all this stuff and there are some pretty unique ways of doing it um and i've used uh, not all of them there's one i haven't used yet but i've used these before the first one and probably the most obvious one is a usb battery portable charger maybe even a couple of them you know i've got one that i can charge my phone with four times don't remember how much it was it was it was maybe 50 bucks so not too bad and i use that when i'm doing um because i can do podcasts um, linked right to my phone so I can actually go out with a, a microphone it plugs into my cell phone and I can record to that but the battery is drained like super fast so I bring along um, my little USB charger I can put it in my pocket and you know I can keep that thing charged up um, you can do the same thing for GoPros as well so say you're doing a cool time lapse of uh, you know a race that you're that you're a part of and the race is going to take four hours and you want to capture the whole thing. Well, your battery is going to die. Um, so you need to have this external option available. Um, 
Now, stepping it up, and this is one I haven't used yet, but I think the USB is like the, the got to have on the basic level. Um, the next one, which is pretty interesting, is small solar panels. These are actually becoming fairly popular. I think the overlanding model, which is like, if people don't know overlanding, it's um, which I've referenced it like three times already. So hopefully, I probably should have explained it earlier. But either way, overlanding is is where you go on like a camping adventure in some sort of remote area using using a vehicle. So like, you're going over the land. You're 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 traveling from one spot to another and like surviving. Well, either way, people are using these solar panels. They throw them up and they'll charge your stuff at it. Really cool thing. Um, so small solar panels are definitely an option and they're getting to be, you know, packable, right? So you can actually bring them along with you if you go to the racetrack, you know, throw one up on the top of your trailer or on the ground somewhere that gets some good sunlight and you can start charging your stuff. Um, the next one up from there is is one of those, um, I don't even know what they're called, but I've got one. I call it a jump starter, but it can do a whole bunch of stuff. So it's like this this portable battery, um, and you can jumpstart a vehicle with it. You can run a little air compressor with it. You know, you can plug in five or six USBs. So it's a little bit bulkier, a little bit bigger, harder to pack, but gives you a lot of opportunities for charging stuff up. Um, and probably at that point, you can start using that for, you know, your actual vehicle stuff too. And the last one, and as you can see, it's kind of been getting more extreme as we go. The last one um, is a small generator. Now, a lot of the racers are already going to have something like this, um, you know, depending on how long they're going to be at a race. But if you bring along a small generator, um, actually, you can get up to a big generator too. But you can obviously do whatever you want with a with generator. But it does add some complexity there because you got to figure out um, your fuel. But um, – Either way, if you're already racing at a track, you probably already have alternate fuel options available. But uh, definitely, you need to be thinking about these things. How do you keep this stuff charged? Okay. I am actually nearing the end here. Only got two more points to cover. Uh, the next one, though, is probably for me one of the more intriguing things, um, which I have not actually gotten into myself. Well, I shouldn't say I completely haven't gotten into it, but either way, let me tell you what it is and then I'll explain why I haven't gotten into it yet. And that is number eight, aerial footage equipment. This means drones. This means solo shot type things, which I guess isn't that aerial, but, and a potentially a helicopter. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with drones. Okay, drones. I've actually owned two drones now. One of them had a really cheap camera on it. Um, I completely flew that out of control, lost it, never found it again. That was a $125 investment, gone. Um, I searched for it for way too long. Um, I spent more hours searching for it than probably the $125 um, that it's worth. Um, I had another one that was $125 that... Uh, it might have had a camera on it. I don't know. I don't remember if it had a camera because I smashed it into the ground at high speed uh, in a very short period of time. So I don't remember. So either way, uh, drones provide a ton of potential. Now, here's the thing with a drone. It's like you're not going to be just operating this thing while you're racing or doing your own thing like – you are most likely going to have to have somebody there flying it for you. Now, if you stop and you're doing like a vlog type thing, you just want to capture some overhead stuff, great. Now, they make some now where you can take your GoPro, which you bought earlier in this show, and, you know, attach it right on there. Um, they have ones that have built-in cameras. DJI is probably the best-known brand for this stuff. Um, they make ones that, you know, they'll auto-hover, they'll self-return, um, pretty amazing stuff. And, and the next thing, honestly, which is amazing and does open up a lot more opportunity for people who are, you know, backcountry or overlanding or stuff, not necessarily track people because there's probably rules against flying drones in tracks or like public areas. But uh, either way, there's some good options out there now for self-flying drones. So they actually will track you. Um, I think you wear some sort of beacon. But you'll launch them, and they'll track behind you and get some footage, um, and it is amazing. Now, I've never used um, any of these, but I've definitely seen them. Everybody's seen options of these stuff. But if you want to really get next level, I think you need to invest in some aerial footage equipment like a drone. 
Now the next thing that I mentioned earlier, and it's not really aerial footage, but it's called a solo shot. Um, this you probably could use at a track type activity, but again, you wear some sort of beacon and the solo shot will track you. Um, so it will follow you as you're doing your movements instead of having your grandmother, you know, hold the camera for an hour while you're racing. And then, you know, it's all like bouncy and whatnot. You hook it up to the solo shot and it's tracking you the whole time. So it's pretty cool. The, you know, autonomy of the solo shot and also the self-flying drone really opens up your options where if you are a, you know, a one person show, you can still get some really good footage. So I'm really intrigued by this stuff. I would love to invest in a self-flying drone. Um, it's definitely not in the, in the cards right now um, since I just dropped a bunch of cash on this doggone GoPro. But um, really cool thing. And I think that if you really want to get some crazy good footage, this is where you got to go. Now, the last one here, I got to bring it up and it, Everybody who does desert racing knows what I'm talking about. You can rent a helicopter. I don't know. Maybe you could buy one, but probably not. Uh, you're probably not listening to this show if you can buy a helicopter, but maybe even not if you can rent one. But either way, renting a helicopter is amazing for destination racing. Um, so desert racing, like this is where the top dogs are at. They're renting these helicopters, getting amazing footage. So your parent the helicopter with the professional equipment and with the film crew. Like that's just all there's to it. Cause you're down there racing. You got to hire somebody to do this stuff and you're shelling out some cash. I wish I could tell you how much it is, but um, you can definitely build this kind of stuff into your sponsorship program so that they know what to expect and what you're planning. So <laughs> rent a helicopter, just a quick review here of the, the aerial footage equipment, which doesn't, include only aerial footage equipment but drones solo shot and helicopters all right last but not least you're going to need means of storing all this stuff because no matter what you're doing some sort of traveling whether it's out to a trail or out to a race you know you're going to have to transport this stuff i highly recommend getting a durable gear bag um, especially for the, some of this equipment. If you're getting into professional equipment, you need to get into uh, Pelican cases, um, which are very durable, very expensive, but you're going to want to protect that equipment. Now, if you're into you know GoPros and, and iPhones and stuff like that, you know I think a smaller uh, case that you know houses all the gear is is good enough. Um, you know if you were to get that, drop that stuff and it's and it's damaged. Um, you're out maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. You get into this other stuff and you you damage it. Like we're talking, at, you know, tens of thousands of dollars sometimes. So, really, you need to think about how you're transporting all this stuff um, safely and to protect it. Um, there's plenty of options out there. Um, I mean, even if you just Google um, audio equipment, um, video equipment, photography equipment, storage, there's a billion options. So I really think though, if you're going to be investing in any of this other stuff, you got to invest in means of safely carrying and safely storing it. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of the sponsored Rider Club podcast, which is powered by Amsoil. Again, make sure you subscribe that we don't miss any of our upcoming shows. And follow us on social media, uh, specifically Facebook. That's where we do our live shows. But we also have a lot of cool, fun content on the other ones as well. And to get some insider access to an upcoming guest, go ahead and check out the Sponsored Rider Club on Facebook. That is a forum where you can come and ask questions. And you can get best practice information from other riders and racers out there. All right, special thanks goes out to our sponsors, Amsoil. Solderweld, Bold Racing, TopThePodium.com, and Crash Addict Industries. And I also want to shout out our other partners, GSP XTV, MBRP, HMK, Studboy Traction, and High Octane Coffee. I look forward to serving you again next week. Until then, have fun and ride safe.